My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer. Other people want to make friends? I'm just trying to help you make some money. My job is not just to entertain, but to educate, to teach how this business works. So call me at 1-800-743-CNBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. The crumbling crypto world may have stolen the show today, but make no mistake about it, the return of the bull is the real story. Yes, the emperor of crypto, Sam Bankman-Fried, proved to have no clothes, or at least really bad ones. And yes, billions of dollars did vanish in thin air. Yet its damage couldn't obscure the positive reverberations from yesterday's consumer price index reading, which was so powerful, it let us rally again, Dow gaining 32 points, this would be jumping 0.92%, and the NASDAQ, get this, surging 1.88%, led by stocks that do well when the Fed stops bringing the pain because the CPI was so lighter than expected. At the same time, the recession stocks did get slammed today. As someone who believes in a balanced portfolio, the pickings were quite good. Lots of quality, pharma and sale. Lots of not-so-good cloud stocks being bought. We told members of the investing club to take the other side of the trade, buy some staples, dump the narrative oil text into the strength. That is, if you still have any. It was a very good morning meeting I had with Jeff Marks because it was really timely before some powerful reversals. We know there'll be further revelations about crypto, even as all the king's horses and all the king's men are working hard to put Humpty Dumpty coin back together again. Hey, that's a good name for a currency, Humpty Dumpty currency. Let's start it. But crypto is a sideshow, people. What matters next week as we go into the game plan is whether inflation will stay tame. Because tame inflation means the Fed can slam the brakes on the economy or it can stop. The lower inflation, the less likely we have high rate hikes. So to that end, let's go to the wall and figure out what to focus on in a week that's actually devoted largely to retail, which means to you. In fact, let's start there. On Tuesday, we get the aggregate number. We get retail sales. Now, an aggregate number is what the Fed's looking at. And while I I want retail stocks to do well, oddly, I have to root for a weak number there with little inflation in order to make that happen. See, I'm concerned that the market's got a little bit of a panglossian sheen going. But if we see weak retail sales and learn that things are getting very promotional in the key power sector, well, then the market can stay strong. Remember, we're in bad news is good news mode with these macro numbers. The worse retail gets, the less damage the Fed needs to do before they declare victory. And apparel, as anyone saw, if you actually broke down the index of the CPI, is a gigantic part of Monday's pretty quiet, except for a report from a company called High Peak Energy, which was profiled a long time ago. I expect it to be stellar. Now, most of the oil companies that I focus on these days are all about conserving cash and returning to shareholders. High Peak, on the other hand, is just a plain old-fashioned go-for-the-gusto driller. And it's got tremendous growth. It is definitely what you want to own if you think that oil prices are going much higher. Tuesday, aside from the grandiose retail numbers, we hear from Walmart. All right, now, Walmart, all I can tell you is that the vast majority of Wall Street has decided this one's going to be good, maybe even a blowout quarter, and the stock's going to keep running. Now, i got to tell you, we own Costco for that, Costco for the charitable trust, but we're t- we've tried over and over again to be at Walmart. Only to be surprised by the downside and finally just threw our hands up and said, no, thank you. The good news here is that the economy is finally soft enough that the consumer may start to trade down, even as people will still have money to spend. And that cuts and always has in favor of Walmart. On the opposite side of the equation, there's lots of money bet against the stock of Home Depot because housing is so soft. I think there's more to Home Depot than just new construction. Same goes for Lowe's, which is the next day. Uh, It's entirely possible that both companies are winning because of renovations. Contractors are Home Depot's wheelhouse. Lowe's does great with do-it-yourselfers, and they remodel plenty. I don't expect either one of these to knock it out of the park. But if they can talk about how housing is not a dead industry, I am sure that Toll Brothers, Lennar, Horton, and Pulte will continue to run as they have ever since Horton reported, and we got that core CPI data earlier in the week. Remember, we visited Home Depot not that long ago. There's so much more to this company than just, say, timber. 
Now, before they open Wednesday, we get TJX, which to me represents the best of the best for this particular moment. TJX buys merchandise that other retailers are desperate to get rid of so they can bring in new stuff. And then they buy this inventory at incredibly low prices. They call TJX an all-price retailer. You know what I call it? A cash machine. Target reports, too. I know many people have been shorting this one, but I think the shorts could be wrong. CEO Brian Cornell just got a new contract to keep running the joint. I am a believer in Target. Here's one controversial. NVIDIA. It missed the last quarter and talked about how our government's blocking the sale of their most powerful chips to China. Ever since then, the stock has been roaring. Now, but maybe that's because NVIDIA found a way to sell different chips to the People's Republic. Uh, and maybe you could pop on that. But I'm concerned that the semis are enjoying more of a short covering rally than the real thing, which means clean inventories and brand new cooler running pro uh, product is what's going to save, save the day. Now, after the close, we get results from Cisco. The networking kingpin's been in a bit of a rut, but it has good orders. I like the risk war going in. Here's a fun one on Wednesday. Bolero. Remember we met then? This is a SPAC that's rolling up bowling alleys across the country, making them real cool, too. And I, I happen to love them. It's just a fun thing. They're printing money. I, I, I want to own this one ahead if you want a speculative stock. Now, Thursday, well, it starts like at like 4 in the morning. It's like Alibaba. You know, you come in, it's going crazy. Now, this is the largest e-commerce play in China. I want to be as candid as possible. I think the Chinese government wants a good number here. So they'll give you a good number. They want American investors back in their stock market. They know that they need that money. And just so you know, uh, the easiest way to lure Americans back in is to have companies like Alibaba to deliver solid results and give bullish commentary that's checked off by the government. That's how it's done. My view, look, it isn't the first national Sam Friedman bank, but I am sick of trusting the Chinese government. Alibaba will always be hostage to the, China, the Communist Party. This quarter, that might be good for them. Next quarter, it may be bad. Hey, two tough ones, Kohl's and Gap. They both report. And while Kohl's has already pre-announced what looked like an okay number, I sure don't want to stick around for their holiday projections, even as I do like the interim CEO, Tom Kingsbury, who takes over next month. As for Gap, it's incredibly inexpensive. Unfortunately, Gap's also fighting for its life in an existential contest, and I don't want to be part of that salvage mission. The one I do like is Palo Alto Networks. The Kesha Aurora. I recommend buying this stock. Let's say it goes down on any of these days. Buy this first if it dips. This is the finest cybersecurity company out there, and I think it could have a monster quarter. Finally, Friday, we get results from a stock I really haven't, like Foot Locker. Now, this is the first conference call done by Mary Dillon, whom I do like. She did such an amazing job at Ulta Beauty. Dillon turned Ulta around. I bet she has a plan to turn around the troubled Foot Locker, too. I know people really want me to talk crypto, okay? And I'll do that at the end of the show. The only big stock that's involved directly, though, is MicroStrategy. Mister, they own so much Bitcoin that they could be in real trouble, although the key to owning Bitcoin is to tell others who don't who say, wow, you have a lot of Bitcoin. You just call them idiots. That's the way they've done this for years now. Oh, you don't like my position? That's because you're an idiot. I used to argue like that in fifth grade. I think the ongoing collapse of all things crypto will no doubt be the talk of the week. I'd rather make money in good stocks and throw away the bad ones. Hey, one more word on crypto before we move on. I've been screaming at the government, any part of it, to regulate the crypto market to protect you, and I've failed, okay? I've done it endlessly. But at this joint, I got, at this point, I got to tell you, I, I hope the regulators recognize the barn doors opened and the horses are all gone. Bottom line, this market's got a lot of exciting sideshows, but in the end, what matters is inflation. If we get more signs that it's moderating next week, this market can stay strong. Otherwise, the rally will just run out of steam. Daniel in California. Daniel. Hey, Jim. I'm actually in Brazil hoping to catch some Formula One this weekend. Brazil? Uh, this oh, my yes. God. Are you lucky? Yeah, I got a lot of relatives down there, but I can't find them. Maybe you can look for them. What's going on? Uh, this company had a great Q3 and has recovered nicely uh, from its 52-week low. What are your thoughts on Intuitive ISRG? I happen to think that they make incredible equipment, and they've got a razor razor blade model, and it's coming back, and I think you should continue to buy it. And have a great time in Brazil, and keep telling them how great America is. What matters right now is inflation. If we get more signs that it's moderating next week, this market will stay strong. Otherwise, hey, good chance. On Mid Money Tonight, it's Veterans Day. So we're talking to an incredible leader in veteran Lockheed Martin, Jim Taiklin. 
Learning more about how his service has shaped him into the CEO he is in today. Boy, is he a good one. Then the cloud, how, uh, the cloud stocks, we know what they've been, right? I mean, any shocker? But after yesterday's bounce, could this run have staying power? Or is it time to ring the register? I'll give you my take. And Lifetime just opened up its latest outpost here in downtown Manhattan. So I'm sitting down with the company's top brass to learn more about what the company has in its pipeline. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.